Okay, welcome back. All right, so first thing we do is ravage or retaliation. Remember, your scenario book tells you what happens there. What happens for us is very simple. This starts off the board like that, and the only thing that happens on turn one is this moves into the turn one box. That's the whole ravager retaliation step for us. So I'm gonna put this over here on this side. Step two is recurring events, okay? These are your event cards. If, for example, this was up and displayed, this would occur. Whatever this effect is would occur right now. That's what recurring events means. These ha Once these cards are out in the game, they occur over and over again until you uh, eliminate them. And you eliminate them by spending two combat tokens. So that's the only way you can eliminate them. Um, you need those combat tokens to build your star bases though. So they are precious, All right? So uh, uh, we don't have any. So there's no events at the start of the game. Thank goodness. They're all ugly and bad. Don't ever get them. And by the way, we can't avoid that. So nothing happens during recurring events. Next is scanning report. This is a simple one. What we do is we draw this card. It's, it's one of these, okay? I'm drawing the top card from the deck. And there's multiple things that we have to do. The first thing we have to do is it's telling us where an XPM token is gonna be. That's one of these. So these are gonna spawn throughout the, the map. And, and that's, of course, what we need to win the game. So what it's saying is, is it's gonna show up in a yellow asteroid belt or um, a blue planet. Well, unfortunately, there's, so then what you have to do is you have to look at the map that's in the game. Right now, uh, this is a neutral. It's not even yellow or blue. And here, I'll, I'll just, let's use the nebula as an example. Here you can see that that's a, that's a green. Okay, that's where these colors come in, right? So what you would need to find is we're looking for an asteroid belt with the, uh, with the yellow uh, color. So let's pretend this was an asteroid belt. That's a green color, so it still doesn't match the criteria. So you're looking for a very, very specific criteria in order to place this XPM token. And you always do left side first, then right side. So you do this check first. If that fails, then you do this check. Now, what happens if both fail? Well, if both fail, then, then we explore the galaxy. It's like a free exploration, if you will. There's exploration actions we get to do, but this is a free exploration. <clears throat> and, um, and so uh, I'm just pulling out the rule book real quick because I'm pretty sure we're drawing two when this happens. And just making sure. Da, 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 da. Oh, come on. Why can't I find it? Here we go. First player draws two sectors and places them on the table. Okay, so, so what does that mean? Well, we come over here and we actually just draw the first two, and both of these are gonna be placed. So we get to place them anywhere we'd like, but it's just like most games, it has to touch two sides. You can't put it in these outer zones yet. And then the other rule is, is it has to be no more than three away from the sector. So you can't have like this, this snake that goes all the way around. So here's the first one, and you can see right there, that's a green asteroid belt. So we're gonna put that there. And then the second one is empty space. And we like empty space, so I'm going to put empty space there, like so, okay? Now that happened because we were unable to find a place to put an XPM token. And here you can see that asteroid belt was looking for a yellow, and now you can see we have an asteroid belt, but it's green. So even now, if we drew this card again, it would still fail. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now the last part is raiders are spawning, and they're spawning on a red zone that is, oh, they're just spawning on red zones, all red zones, okay? Um, this happens after that. 
So this happens after we put these two tiles out. That could actually hurt you. But if you'll notice, we have a green and a blue, and then these aren't actual colors. There's no colors on those. So there is no red zone, so we can ignore the raider spawning. Um, that's a mixed blessing, because if there's a raider that, that's out there, that means it's a raider we get to kill. <laughs> <laughs> but um, trust me, we'll get plenty of opportunities to kill some raiders. Um, it just means we're not killing any of this first round. So that resolves that step. That's the scanning report step. So now we go to upkeep. And so with upkeep, we're going to go back to our player board. And if I had spent my, my uh, activation tokens, I would, at this point in time, take them off my cards and put them back in my cargo. That does not happen until upkeep. It is possible when resolving those event cards that you need to use your cards down here, but your activation tokens were already used. And that's why it's very important that you can't, you gotta understand, you don't get, if you don't get these back at the end of the round, you get them back during phase two of the next round, okay? All right, so the other thing we can do is we can spend four of these token, or these, uh, I can't even remember what they're called. This actinium or whatever. Um, we're going to spend four to level up. Um, now your board says two, but remember we're doing solo rules, so that changes to four. So for me, it's, um, you know, we get to level up either our starport or our research lab. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking out my advanced cards because they don't do me anything right now. So I have six research lab cards, right, to choose from. And then here's the advanced starport cards. I'm gonna set those aside. And now I have six starport cards to choose from. This can be overwhelming in the beginning of the game. Like what on earth do we wanna do? So let's say I pick a starport, right? So I'm gonna level up my starport here. If I did that, then I get to pick one of these six cards and, and I would put it here. I mean, you can put it on any of the three spots, but I'd put it there. Um, so let's say I picked the hover tank. What the hover tank would do is give me one more speed. And for activation tokens, I can spend one to reduce any damage I take by one. That's actually not bad at all. Um, this next one gives me an attack, discard two damage, discard to deal two damage to an enemy without having to roll dice. Also, not bad. Uh, gives me an attack, I get to reroll a die in combat. I can spend X combat tokens to gain X success. So I can just guarantee success by spending combat tokens. I don't like this one uh, because combat tokens are, there's never enough in the game, to be quite honest. I, uh, I really have a hard time with that one. Um, spend an Astartium to repair two hull damage. I don't like this one because these are precious. You need those to level up. So why would I spend them to repair two hull damage? I don't like that. This one is you're using an activation token to repair one hull damage. Much, much better. I am, those activation tokens, I get them every round. And so spending one of them just to repair a hull damage, granted it's only one damage instead of two, still much more valuable, okay? Those are the star ports. And as you saw, there's some nice ones in there. And then, of course, the advanced ones could be even better. Uh, we can talk about those later. So now getting to the research lab, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing research lab. And I'll show you. Here, I can spend an activation to reroll one die during exploration. When you do exploration, there's going to be exploration checks. And rerolling a die could be the difference between succeeding or not. And it gives you one attack. Move to an adjacent sector. This is a free move. It doesn't cost any movement points and it's not a part of your movement phase. So this could be valuable. Uh, one uh, shield for that one. Spend combat tokens to reroll two times the number of tokens that you spent uh, dice. Uh, it's powerful. You know what, I would get these if I'm fighting a boss at the end of the game. That's what these would be good for, is fighting bosses at the end when you don't need these combat tokens anymore. But in the early game, these are awful. Discard to gain five movement points. So it's just an energy cell. Um, I can see some value in that. 
but not in the beginning of the game. Repair one hull damage. And just so you know, there was uh, another one that said repair hull. And if you have both, you would need two different activation tokens, but you can actually repair twice. And this is the one that we usually, I usually want to get. On killing an enemy, I can spend an activation token to gain one of these. So I just get one of these for free every time I kill an enemy. That is super powerful. Now, um, what's crazy though is, is there's no enemies on the board, so this is not as helpful, but I'm still taking it. So I'm gonna put this down like so, and there I am, um, level one research lab, okay? So I know that was pretty long-winded, but uh, uh, now you got an idea of what the cards are. And my strategy is, is I wanted to minimum get this, and then we're gonna go up on the Starport Lab, or uh, we're gonna become good combat people. I think that's more important at this phase. I'm not sure. Uh, let's not forget that this does give me another speed, which is nice, because now I can go up against level two raiders. But at this point, the other stats are more important to me. Uh, Having more speed is king, but right now I do have more speed, so the other stats are where I really want to go up. So this Scrapyard is is a, a wonderful card. Um, you could argue, well, you could have gotten this later. Yes, I could have, but um, it's just so valuable. I want it now. And, and yes, the speed is nice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one other thing you might be wondering, what happens if the hull goes to zero? Which ship dies? Excellent question. The ship that dies is whichever one was being attacked. <laughs> and and the game rules are um, sort of generous. Like if you your hull goes to zero, you actually reset back at the at the at the Stargate, and you do lose some things, but um, you don't lose that much. And and you even keep all your power ups and stuff. It you keep all your levels. It's just you get another ship, basically. Um, the thing you're gonna really lose are these. Those go away if your ship gets destroyed. And I think you might also lose these. I, I'll have to check. It's in the rules. Uh, I try not to get destroyed because getting destroyed stinks, even if the rules are, are generous. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, but the big thing is, is if you do get destroyed, just understand you're not out of the game. They, they put you back in, and you can keep doing things. So um, that's it for upkeep. So now we go to movement. And here we can pick up an XBM and we spend movement points. So um, here's what's interesting. The way movement works is I'm gonna look at my speed and it's a five. And that's the other thing, speed counts as movement points. So not only does it help you in combat, but it helps you to move around the map. So um, this three means it's gonna cost me three movement points to go there. That'll cost me three. This is one, that's one. And then, of course, one to go there. Now, there is a rule under movement, sorry, that you can explore. So what we're going to do is, um, uh, you know, it's just telling you how to move, and we just explained all that. And then, um, yeah, so to explore a new sector, Adjacent to your current one, place a new sector on the board and move your armada there. The new sector cannot be placed at a distance greater than three and is always one movement point. After placing your armada in a new sector, your movement ends regardless of any remaining movement points. That was the part I was checking. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore uh, with uh, both guys. Okay, When we explore, that's triggering an explore action. So, so we're going to do, we're going to reveal the new sector here, but then in phase four, both of our guys are going to be getting, doing what's called an explore encounter, okay? Um, if you reveal new tiles and do that, you're, you're absolutely going to do an explore encounter. Uh, you don't get to pick combat or the other one. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And, and so, uh, uh, starting with the orange character, we could, for example, go up here and then explore there, or we could just explore right next to us. It's a tricky business. Um, raiders damage you if they get to the star base. 
So this was a beautiful, these two are beautiful because unless, so like sometimes the raiders only spawn on, um, you know, planets or whatever. So this one uh, is a blue. So raiders could spawn there if a blue is on the raider card. Um, you want something like this next to you because you want raiders to spawn far away from you. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so what I can do is I have five movement points. So I can go three and then I'm going to explore there. And that's what I'll do. So I'm, and, and when you explore, you only draw one. And whatever you get is whatever it is. So, so then I'm moving in. You're committing to move in, by the way, when you do that. And it only costs one movement point. It doesn't matter what this says. This, what it says there doesn't matter because you're exploring, right? So you, you explored from here. You didn't know what that was, and you're spending one movement point to go there. Um, and then um, what we're going to do with the yellow one is we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to come here and then just explore this way. So like that. Okay, so that's my movement step. And then we get to uh, phase four. Uh, we're going to do exploration. So we pick whichever ship we're going to start with, and then we do what's called the exploration step. Now, the exploration uses these exploration cards. So they're going to have, like, the little satellite dish on them. So just make sure they're shuffled. And we'll start with the orange ship first. And <clears throat> we're going to draw one. So uh, every exploration card is going to look like this. And this is just flavor stuff. Mutiny on your ship means one thing. So it's a mutiny. And um, there's, a, there's an easy check and there's a hard check. And you get to choose. It's, uh, you get to pick. And, and the only thing that's different between your picks is the reward. So uh, the easy check just says that I need to roll shields and get one success. And remember, my shields are a three. So I'm going to roll three dice, and as long as one of them is a four, five, or six, I would pass. And then what I would get is I would get two Astartium, which are those crystals. I would get to draw one common reward card, and I would get one exploration token. Those are the precious things we need for star bases. Or I can do an attack four. So I'd roll in my attack dice, and I need four successes. I only have three dice. So this is not uh, something I'm going to be able to do. And if I do that, I get two crystals and then one of the, the uncommon treasures and an exploration token. So the only difference between the two is getting an uncommon treasure versus a common. I am totally okay with the common. So let's do that right now. So my, like we said, my, my shield value was three. And so I need to get one success on these three dice. And there you go. I got one, two successes out of three. I only needed one. Uh, so right there, I only needed one. So first thing I do is I get two crystals. And here's the other thing. When you're controlling two ships, there's only one cargo and it's shared between the two ships. It doesn't matter if one's on one end of the galaxy, one's on the other. It's just how the solo rules work. So um, they doubled the amount it cost to level up, but because you have two ships, I'm getting crystals from both ships, so um, I will accumulate crystals quicker. Um, I can get one of these cards. Now, I forgot to mention, based on the number of players in the game, you're limited to how many of these you can have. Um, I'm allowed to have six. So what you're going to draw is the card that looks like this. Those are your common rewards cards. And what it says, is it says instant. And so it's plus one success for any roll. So instant just means I get to use it at any time. And, and here's what's cool. If you're in a multiplayer game, I can use this on another player's turn and use it to help them. So um, it's not necessarily my rolls, but we get to keep six of these. Okay, so this is one out of six, and I'm just going to lay it down actually on the other side of my player board. And so we get to just add plus one success to any roll at any time with that secret weapon. So it's a nice little uh, uh, card to help us out. Okay, and then uh, for a common reward, that was pretty good. And then we get one of those. We're going to grab one of these, and then that goes in our... Okay, so we now have one exploration token. All right, that's everything you need for uh, exploration. Now, what happens if you fail an exploration? Uh, if you fail, um, 
there's weeping and gnashing of teeth for sure. Um, but the um, but the big thing uh, I'm just I'm looking it up because it, it is one of those things I always have to look up when it happens. Um, if you fail the check roll, you take two points of damage. It doesn't say it on the card, but you're going to get two points of hull damage, but you still get one Astardium Crystal. So instead of getting two, you would get one. And then, um, but what's nasty though, is one of these, these nasty event cards gets drawn. And so uh, failing stinks. You don't want to fail your successes, your, your success checks. Um, they, this game will punish you and you will lose <laughs> if you fail too many times. Um, now here's the thing about exploration is it's risky. You don't know what this card's gonna be. If I'm fighting a raider, I know exactly what I'm up against, right? Because I got this little, every level one raider has these exact rewards and these exact skills. Um, the exploration is much more risky. Um, it's pretty uh, hairy, actually. Uh, so, next one. This is the yellow ship. When something big, bad, and mean is coming your way. So here, I could do a speed two check. Well, guess what? We got awesome speed, so I'm feeling good about that. Or I can do a attack fives check. And the attack five check is absolutely impossible. So um, this is just like the last one. Uh, the only difference is an advanced reward versus a common reward. So we're gonna go for the common, but we have to do a speed two check. Okay, so our speed is five. Um, so I feel a lot better about being able to add two more dice. And look at that, I failed. All right, that's awful. So I have one, but I guess we're gonna to have to use our card already to get plus one success for any roll. Um, I was really hoping to hold on to that for a lot longer, um, but it is not meant to be. Now the rules do say just put it on the bottom. Um, you don't even have to reshuffle or have a discard pile. Just They said just put it on the bottom. And I, I tend to agree with it because there's just enough cards in the deck that by the time you get back to the beginning, if you actually can remember what the sequence of things are that you're gonna run into, Good luck. You know, happy, you know, congratulations. Get yourself a cookie. Um, but anyways, we had to use that card to succeed, and I did uh, get a little premature there and put the card away, but we're getting one of those. We're getting another one of these. And we're getting two more of those. So uh, this card is pushback. Move all raiders and players in the current sector by one sector. So, um, <clears throat> so this um, has limited use, but when it is used, it can be very valuable. So we're, and by the way, if you uh, have six of these and need to draw a seventh, you can choose to discard this to get that seventh, and that might likely happen, but uh, we'll hold on to it. It's always a nice little tool in the tool belt. Okay, and then we go to expand. And this is only for building star bases, which we're not gonna do. So round one is over. And just like that, we just did one round and I did it in probably three times the amount of time it should actually take you because uh, I'm explaining things along the way. So uh, we now move to round two and Ravager Retaliation. So it explained that we're gonna move this up by one. And that's it. There are no event cards, so we can avoid that. Now let's do the scanning report. The scanning report says an XPM will be generated in a blue asteroid belt. I see a green asteroid belt and a red one, but no blue one. So nothing there. Or a red planet. And I see a red asteroid belt and a red uh, empty space. So there's no red planet. So once again, uh, these don't spawn. Sometimes you get really lucky and you can get one of these early. Um, so we're gonna draw two. The first one is a blue planet with a two. Um, so again, we can place it anywhere we'd like. And I'm gonna go ahead and just place it there. And then the next one is a asteroid belt. So I'm gonna just place it over here, like so. All right, so uh, the map keeps getting bigger. 
And once more, in case you're keeping track, uh, there's no raiders. Well, hold on. Raiders spawn on green spots. So we do have a raider. Yay. Okay, so looking at the board, there's one green spot. So you grab a level one raider and you put it on the green. And that raider is going to move here and destroy us when the raiders actually move. They don't move all the time, by the way. They only move if an event or something tells them to. So don't think that that's gonna happen like the next turn, right? You could actually leave that raider there for quite a while, but if something ever pops up that says raiders move, then uh, that's when you're screwed, okay? But don't worry, we're attacking that raider uh, this turn. We need combat tokens. So uh, that's it. Uh, we, we successfully did all that. I'm gonna put this card away. And we now move on to upkeep. Well, here's the cool thing about upkeep. We have four crystals again. So let's level up. So, and you might have noticed that that's, that's um, pretty common. Uh, and even in your game, you're, you're likely going to level up once per round if you're doing everything right. And if it's a 10 round game, I mean, look at how many level ups there are. I mean, it's, you need to level up once per round. So, uh, and at some point you need to level up more than once per round. So, uh, but we're gonna level up a starport. So let's do that. And I'm gonna grab our starport tokens. Um, I do like repairing hull damage. Um, I do like reducing damage, but I don't want more speed. I wanna help out. I do like this one. But see, this is, when it says discard, that means you're, you're discarding the Astral Eagle. So, so you put this into play and then it's gone. You don't even get to use it anymore. And uh, that's not good. Uh, Reroll one die during combat. Um, you know what's funny is I really like the repair damage, but... Um, yeah, see, I like this one too. I just don't want some more speed yet. Oh, what if I went up on the lab? Reroll die during exploration, and I get a... I sort of like that, because remember, our exploration backfired on us. Um, I sort of wanted to go up on these starports, though. I want an attack, so let's get an attack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this Star Trooper then. Uh, we get to reroll one die during combat. So the Star Trooper gives us plus one to our attack. So we move up one on the attack and we're good to go there. Okay, so um, moving on, we are back to our movement. So this turns can go pretty fast. So I'm gonna spend, I have five movement because I have five speed. So orange is going to, so I have five speed and orange is going to spend three of his movement to go here and we're going to attack that raider. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an explore and I think I wanna go one, two, three, and then we'll do a four to get that zone explored. So let's reveal. And so we got a red planet which I think is what we needed this last turn. And so we're gonna do an explore here and a combat there, okay? So we move on to the next phase, which is the combat and explore. So which one do we wanna do first? Um, I'm thinking let's do the explore first. So it is a dawn patrol. And again, you're noticing, you may notice that the rewards are pretty much the same uh, from card to card. I, they change sometimes, but I don't think Maybe they don't change at all. It's been a while since I've played, but um, right now we just, we're totally fine with common rewards. We don't need to push, even though we have a really high speed, a four successes out of five is still pretty aggressive. So we're gonna roll our attack and we wanna get one success. Our attack did go up by one this turn, so we get to roll four dice. 
and there's two successes. So we're gonna get our two crystals, which is always good, never have enough of those. And then we get a common reward, which says during the movement step, we can pull a raider or player from an adjacent sector into yours. You cannot move the target in or out of the jump gate or star base sector. Okay, so another manipulation one, and then we get another exploration token. We now have three exploration tokens. That's enough to build a star base. So, um, but we need three combat tokens to build a star base, and we're gonna work on our first one right here. We have a level one raider. He has three speed, we have five, so we go first. We need to do two hits on him, and our attack, our attack is four, okay? So we're gonna roll four dice and see if we can get two hits on him. So we got one hit, and three misses, okay? Now, um, we just got this Star Trooper. It says reroll one die during combat. So this is where we're going to use those activation tokens. So it's the orange player, so that means the orange player uses the uh, primary one. So we're going to take this activation token, put it on the Star Trooper. Orange player cannot use this again until that token goes back. But we're going to reroll one die during combat. So I'm just going to pick one of my dice and let's reroll it. And look at that, we got a five. So we just did two damage. We destroyed the raider before he got to attack us. So we're gonna get one crystal. See, that's not as good. We get one crystal, and here's what stinks. On killing an enemy, gain one more crystal. However, see, you need, a, you need an activation token. I don't have one. I used it to reroll my die. So I made possibly a tactical error because had I re just upgraded my research lab twice, I would have gotten a CC plus one, which meant I would have gotten another activation token, but I didn't do that. I went, I split myself between. And so um, that's the issue. I don't know. Uh, I could have gotten an extra uh, crystal had I done that. Um, so, you know, it, that's the thing with this game. Everything's trade-offs. And um, had I picked a different commander, right? One with less skills, I could have been level two in something already and already gotten that extra activation token. So you see, my selecting this commander hurt me from being able to get two crystals. And so by not getting two crystals, I'm not keeping up at the pace at leveling up once per round. However, I did have one extra at the start of the game, so I am still going to level up. So we're getting lucky, but I already used my one reserve, okay? We get a combat token, which is precious. We need those, so we got one of those. And we're gonna get a common reward. So that's what that is. And let's go grab a common reward. And then this one, when drawing a card from any pile, pick two instead. Choose one to play and discard the other. So I can use this at any time. And we are now up to three cards. We now have three cards out of our six. So that butterfly effect one, I might use, for example, when we get one of those advanced rewards. That would be a really nice use of it. Um, so let's wait and see. Um, another thing we could do is we could use it for this so we can get those blue tokens out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we now get to the expand phase. We can't expand and we're done. Now you might be asking, what is this regroup thing? Regroup is uh, basically you're choosing not to combat and not to explore. And um, it's, it's, it allows you to, to, uh, to do one of several things. The first one is you can, you can draw a common action card, which is the common reward card I keep talking about. You can repair four whole points and you can actually repair up to 10. We start the game at eight. You can gain an exploration token for just doing nothing. So you can choose not to explore and just do this and you'll get an exploration token, but you won't get the crystals, you won't get the other stuff, but you also don't have to do an exploration check, right? And then you can gain a combat token. So you can do that just to gain. So basically you can just do nothing and still get something. 
That's what the regroup action is. It's just it's not as good because if you do an exploration, you get an exploration token and you get a common action card. See how you're getting multiple things? Um, but it is an option, and uh, I'm not saying... The, the other big reason you do it is uh, it's in the text up near the top. But the other big reason you do a regroup action is I can actually say, okay, I'm, I leveled up enough. I don't need this ability anymore. I can actually take this card off, replace it with any other equivalent card, and then change my power-ups. Now, obviously, I would have to lose my speed by taking this off, and then I get whatever bonus, but I actually get swap cards during that regroup step. And yes, you, you, uh, you can still take you know, a token or, do, or, or heal yourself, but that is an opportunity. Like, if you know you're going to fight a boss, you may want to do a regroup the turn before so you can get the right cards on here that maximizes your combat abilities. Right now, we're maximizing our ability to go explore and do stuff. And so... As you can see, you're not hard-coded in your choices. You can always change them, but you do have to spend a whole turn regrouping to do it. Um, anyways. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the round, and uh, again, we're, we're moving on. So now we go to round three. Now, here you can see a boss is going to be formed, or coming, so we, we do this, and it's going to be... The Corrupted Crow, okay? And here you can see he's got an effect of minus one movement point per round. So we are all gonna get one less movement point. Until he's destroyed, he's doing that effect on us, okay? Um, and, and okay, this was the thing that confused us in board game. It says per round, so does that mean on round two it's minus two movement points? No, what it's saying is, is that every single round you're suffering from minus one movement point, only minus one. It doesn't accumulate or, you know, so at the end of the round, the minus one goes away, but then this causes it to re-trigger. <laughs> this is considered an event. So that event phase is when this triggers, okay? Um, now, when one of these spawn, an event card also spawns with it. So now we have this event. You cannot upgrade your starport. Oh, oh. We're not allowed to upgrade. What an awful event that was. Okay, so that's now in play. And uh, I was, we had enough. Look, we got the crystals here to level up and we can't do it. So um, in order to get rid of that embargo event, we have to spend two combat tokens and we only have one. And I need three combat tokens to fight this boss. So uh, I hope you can see how this game gets very frustrating. Um, Okay, the other thing that, and this is in the scenario rules, is we're going to take one of these four, uh, one of these, and uh, I'm just going to randomly pick one. So in taking one of these, uh, this is where the boss is going to spawn. And we actually get to select where he's going to spawn. There are some rules. He can't spawn here next to our jump gate. We can put him all the way over here if we'd like. Um, I'm thinking if that's a good idea or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead put him here. And uh, one thing I forgot to explain is we have to build a star base to be able to defeat him. You know that. But the star base gives you a plus one to all your stats. So if you're rolling for attack, you get to add one extra die to your attack. Um, it lets you add, roll one extra die for everything, not just in the square it's in, but in all the ones surrounding it. So by putting it there, we're now giving ourselves a bonus for anything that's around it. If I would have put it way over here, remember the rules say you could only go one, two, three away. So this would be giving a bonus to these fourth spots, which don't even help us. So uh, we want that star base, if we're going to build one there, to help us all the way around. Okay, I hope that made some sense. And um, we determined it was this guy. So there he is. There's the boss. He's big and mean, and he's nasty. Uh, the good news is, is his, his punishment isn't so bad. It's this one that hurts us. Uh, and oh, by the way, if we ever fight this boss, he has seven speed. So good luck going first against him. 
Um, and then of course he gives you uh, rewards as well. Um, okay, uh, we definitely have a lot of work to do. And that Ravager retaliation step is before recurring events. So now recurring events happens and that's when this minus one movement point hits us. And that's when this hits us, okay? Um, scanning report. We're now gonna draw this. So it says blue asteroids, and I'll let you take a look there, but we don't have blue. We have yellow, we have red, and we even have green, but there's no blue asteroids. Oh, one second. Mindy. Indeed. Okay. All right. Um, this. A green planet. We have blue planets and we have red planets. We don't have green. We're getting extremely bad luck, by the way, on this. So we're going to draw two more. And by the way, the drawing more and more of these, can it's going to help us, obviously, because these blue tokens are going to eventually come out. But it's not helping us because these raiders are going to be spawning everywhere. So let's do the first one. It's a green empty space. I will put that next to our, next to there. And then the other one is red empty space. And since this thing gives us a bonus, I don't think things are going to spawn in empty space. That's the nice thing about empty space is things don't spawn there. So um, I'm going to just put it down here. And yes, you have to start moving your cards around. I think I'm, I'm gonna just do it, yeah. I have no idea where to put it. Let's just do that. Okay, so uh, now we do upkeep. During the upkeep phase is when you get your, your token back. And this is when we would be able to level up, but we can't. So, oh, and I forgot. Let's finish this. Raiders are spawning in the red spots. And it's just all red spots. So, uh, actually, they do spawn in uh, empty areas, so let's just put that there. That's where I wanted to do it. Okay, so we have one raider there, one raider there, and one raider there. And oh, by the way, this one was destroyed. Forgot to take it off the... Oh, and then another raider here. So now you can see our raider problem all of a sudden is getting worse because the more you explore, the more they spawn. So it's not always good to get uh, those tokens or those sectors out, but um, we now have four raiders on the board. And so that's not good. And just making sure I'm doing that rule right. Yep, it says every sector of the color indicated on the card unless an effect indicates otherwise. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of raiders and they're just gonna keep spawning like that. Okay, now moving on, uh, we get to do movement and encounters. So the yellow player is already gonna encounter that raider. And then the orange player is going to go ahead and we're just gonna move up and attack that raider there. So, uh, not much. We just need to get combat tokens so we can get rid of um, this event card. And then we need even more combat tokens because we have enough of these tokens. We need more of those so we can build a star base and kill that boss. That boss is important. And as long as there's no blue tokens on the board, killing things is the only thing we have to do. So we're gonna do two combats. Uh, both of them are gonna be against raiders, level one. We're going to go first because our speed is 5. Remember, it was minus 1 movement, not minus 1 speed. So our speed is 5, and um, uh, we need to get 2 hits. So we're going to start with the yellow ship. And I see 1, 2, 3. That's only 4 dice. Was I not rolling enough last time? Or no, it's attack. I'm sorry. Our attack is 4. So we're going to roll 4 dice. And look at this. I missed. So, so it's just one, one hit. And um, 
Now, I could do the thing where I'm going to spend my activation token to reroll a combat die, but I'm not because I want the crystals. I want crystals. So I'm going to, I do one damage to him, and now it's his turn to attack me. So he's doing an automatic three damage, but our uh, shields are three. So we're going to roll three shields. And I blocked none of them. That hurt. One, two, three. Okay, so then combat just keeps going until somebody wins. So we're gonna roll four, and there's our hit, he's dead. So um, that hurt my selfishness and wanting. So coming back over to here, I'm gonna use this so I can get an extra crystal. That selfishness cost me three hits. So um, we normally get one crystal. I did it so I can get two. Um, there's no limit to how many you can have, by the way. And then, of course, we get a combat token. And we get a common card. Get back an activation token. You may use it again. <laughs> so we could have used it to reroll our die and still had it. All right. Well... Uh, we'll hold on to it for the next combat, because now we're moving on to the orange ship. So let's combat, do combat for him. And these event cards, I'll move them up out of the way. So orange ship, there it is, two hits. So he didn't need to do it. And so then the orange ship is going to do the same thing. We're going to spend an activation token like that. And we're going to get two crystals instead of one. We're going to get a combat token, like so, and then we're going to get um, one of these. It says instant, reroll up to three dice. I am now up to five cards, so I am going to have to start using these cards. Uh, let's not forget to destroy our raiders off the map. All right, and uh, that's it. That's the end of our turn, so we're going to put that card back down. And next up is expand. We do have enough to build a star base, but right now I don't want to. Uh, we want to get rid of that event card so we can um, keep leveling up our, our research lab in star ports. So uh, that was an unfortunate setback. So uh, we're done. We're moving on to next round. Ravager Retaliation. So we just move up to, we moved up to turn four there. And um, the boss doesn't do anything. He's content just staying in his nebula. All we did was we discovered him, and he's, he's harassing us with some kind of energy field that's preventing us from being able to move. Okay? That's the, uh, that's the only thing that's happening. Recurring events. Uh, again, like I said, this triggers and that triggers, but these are like passive. So nothing... Sometimes they'll, they'll do damage to us, for example. It can be really nasty, some of these recurring events. And then we do a scanning report. All right, blue planets. I'm looking and I see no blue planets. Holy cow. Red asteroid belt. Hey, we see one of those, but see, looky here. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna spawn because if there's a raider there, it will not spawn. Let me check. This is a, uh, like I said, the rules are pretty good, but, you know, there's some times where it just doesn't explain. You cannot place an XPM token on a sector occupied by enemy forces present or another XPM. Okay, so there's the rule. So the red, we finally had a chance to place an XPM token, but there was a raider there, and so we can't do it. So guess what happens? We're drawing two more sectors. Here's the first one. It is red planets. And so I'm going to continue to just put things around that star base there. So we put the red planets up there and then the second one are green planets and we're gonna put them there. So if we ever build a star base, we're gonna have maximum bonus for in case raiders spawn around that area um okay and then raiders are spawning in yellow zones 
So uh, the good news there is if they were spawning in red zones, we would have had nasty things happen to us. But they're spawning in yellow. And so I'm looking at yellow, and I actually only see one on the entire map. So we sort of got lucky there. If we ever get green, just give up. Uh, red is actually not very good either. So um, it's to our turn again. And so you can see here that the game's going pretty fast, especially solo. With other players, you might have a little bit of dialogue of, I'm going to do this and you do that. Um, but um, at any point in the game, you can spend these. We could have done these at the end of the last turn. But we are going to spend these. I'm getting rid of this because we definitely want to keep leveling up. So um, this goes away. And, and that's all you have to do. You just spend two combat tokens to make it go away. Um, this, of course, is staying. And we move on to um, the upkeep phase. Right, so we just finished this. We're in the upkeep phase. So um, here's the good thing. Yes, he prevented us from leveling up, but I can spend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can level up twice. I don't need to, do, it's not just once per round. If you have enough tokens, you can level up an infinite amount of times. So, so um, all he did was delay us from being able to level up. Um, and remember, during the upkeep phase, these go back. But the big thing is, is I wanted to get to here. So we can, then the CC plus one lets us go here. Um, it's extremely important that we get a second activation token for each of our ships. And, and I hope you can agree why, because uh, during combat, being able to reroll a die and get the bonus, we want to bo do both things. We don't want to just do one. So that's the first thing. And then uh, also we get a second one of these. So let's, you always have to make sure you're looking at the right cards. Uh, we're going to get a second attack thing, and I think what I want to do is that boss really is fast, so I kept saying we don't need more fast, but we sort of do. So I want to start being able to repair damage. Um, so I actually am going to get this one out. I mean, reducing damage is nice, but I want to repair damage uh, because... Um, uh, we took a lot of damage that last time. And so if we have extra ones of these, we can use these like at the end of the turn, right? We can do our combat, and if we have an extra one left over, we can just repair. So it's just a nice way of using our activation tokens every round. So let's get one of these on the board. And so we now have two of them on the board like that. And it gives me plus one shield, which is actually going to help me to uh, help me in, against bosses and regular combat. So um, so that was one level up, and then we get another one. And I think I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go up one more time, and this is large, I, I do wanna get this, right? Because that CC plus one would be nice. But um, this is where I think focusing on one tree first is actually beneficial. And then also this tree gives us more combat tokens, you know, those things we don't have enough of. And so right now that's the, area I want to go, and we have to kill a boss, and I want to get as many combat-oriented things on the board as I can. So I like reducing damage taken by one. So I'm going to get that out, and we now have all of our slots filled. And so this will increase our speed by one, and now we're up to six. Okay. Um, the six obviously is overkill against raiders, but the boss for example, has seven speed, so we're not even fast enough against him yet. All right, so uh, I hope all that made sense, and we're going to move on, and um, I'm just looking at my cards here because we are up to five out of six cards, so we're going to probably have to um, take care of those, but we move on to our movement. Remember, we get minus one movement. We are at six speed, so we're going to get five movement, and so starting with the orange player, Orange Armada. This is three, four movement. I easily can go and attack him. And then this is uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna go and attack two different um, raiders. Get them off the board. We're gonna get our combat tokens, which is important. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's it. So uh, let's, let's do that. 
And if you are keeping track, we're almost halfway through this scenario and we have yet to bring back one single blue token. There hasn't even been a blue token spawning. Um, like I said, this game is tight. It's, it's a very tight game. It's very hard. Um, the rules are simple, but it's a good, good challenge. So um, we want to just get more combat tokens. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And this scrapyard is just me, you know, thinking about that and knowing that. So um, let's go ahead and get that going. So orange is first, our attack is four. And there's only one hit. Now we do have the benefit of two activation tokens. So I'm gonna use one to reroll a combat die. Okay, so we're gonna reroll this one. And there it is, I got two hits. So we destroyed the raider. And remember the raiders use this constant card. So we're gonna get one crystal. I'm gonna turn this way. We're gonna get one crystal, but I'm gonna spend this to go here to get two crystals. And then we're gonna get a combat token, which we really desperately need. And then we're gonna get a common reward. And it's another reroll up to three dice. So we are um, getting pretty high on the common rewards. And in fact, we are at our maximum. So, so I'm gonna take, get back an activation token. It says you may use it again. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, largely because I just want to free up space, right, for us to to get more cards. So I'm going to get back this one, and of course I can only use this once, but, but when I get it back I can use it again, I think, to get another crystal. Um, the problem is, is it says on killing, which is sort of like a at that moment thing. So I'm going to instead just move it over here and repair a whole damage because we know we need to do that. And so um, that's orange. So now we're gonna move to yellow. Gonna do the same thing. And once again, we just keep missing. This is just awful rolling. Um, so yellow will reroll combat die. Nope, we're gonna use another card. This one says reroll up to three dice. Um, it's a bit of an overkill, but we wanna free up some cards. So there we go, we got two more hits and we destroyed the raider. Obviously we could let the raider attack us, but we don't want to. And then uh, we're gonna use one to gain an extra crystal. And then the other one, since we used a card to do the reroll, will be to repair another hole damage. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm doing this aggressively because we're gonna be attacking that boss soon and I need to get our hull damage up. The boss is going to hit us. He's gonna punch us hard. So, um, so let's give us our rewards. We get two more crystals. We get another one of these combat tokens. And then we get um, common reward. Plus two movement points. Okay, not bad. All right, we are done with our turn. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end here and we will start turn five in the next video. Thank you for watching.